Now I want to introduce you to my next video. I'm going to make this project. It's called a lucet or lucet. Uh, it's a little weaving tool. You just take any kind of string and make this this cord. It's a very strong cord. You can even cut it. It doesn't unravel. It's just a nice little hobby tool. Uh, this one is made out of walnut and it's one half inch thick. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this video in a step-by-step -step tutorial and look at every step and explain it in detail as best I can. And I'll uh, show you how I make this. It's very simple. It won't take long to make it. Just a few cuts. Uh, so I hope you like that. If you like the idea of a, a tutorial video of a project step-by-step, -step, well, let me know that and I'll do more of them. And if you like it, please hit the like button. and. Uh, Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed, and I'll try to do more of this. But in the next step, I want to introduce you to the material and the pattern. So this is the pattern. It's a Steve Good pattern. And when you print it out, it comes with uh, two sizes, and I'm making the larger size, which is what I, I was displaying to start the video. This is a piece of half inch, and I'm not sure exactly what it is. I'm, it may be white oak. It's just a, a nice hardwood. It's going to be solid and uh, hefty in your hand when you get done with it. And it should be easy to cut, make nice clean cuts around the edge. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna break this board down, just have enough for this pattern, and I'll put that on there uh, to get an idea of where I need to cut it. And I'm gonna mark it about here so I'll know where I need to cut. So next I'll take this over to that my table saw. Now you can cut it with anything. Uh, anything that you can cut with. You can use a hand saw. Uh, you could use a scroll saw. I use a scroll saw to break down some stuff, especially if it's going to be uh, other than a straight line, anything that's kind of convoluted. I'll use a scroll saw to break it down to save material if I can. But in this case, I want to leave a good edge on my uh, leftover board in case I need that for a different project somewhere down the line and I, have, I may need a straight edge on it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this over to my table saw. I've got a cross cut sled and I'm going to cut it over there. Yeah, I've got this piece cut. Uh, what you can do, normally you're going to figure out where, how you want to mount your pattern. We don't have many options here. It's only going to go one way. But if you had a larger board, uh, you'd have the option of going crossways of the grain, but I don't recommend that. I would prefer that you stay, keep the grain running lengthwise of the project because you have a narrow part here, some in here that's Possibly it could break, probably won't, but that would add to the possibility if you dropped it uh, or sat on it or something, it could possibly break in that grain. So I try to run the grain lengthwise. So what I'm going to do next though, I got this tape. I'm going to use this tape to mount the pattern. I'm going to put the tape on this wood. And I like to use this blue tape, but you can use any kind of painter's tape that will stick uh, to the wood but not leave a residue and remove easily. So uh, you can use the green frog tape, you can use just plain old blue painter's tape, if you've got any of those type uh, masking tape, any, any kind of painter's type tape that's easily to rem easy to remove but sticks well. And the reason I do that, it makes it easier to remove the pattern off the piece when you're finished. When I first started, uh, the book's recommended you just glue this directly to the wood and then you have to use uh, something acetone or something try to dissolve the glue to get the uh, pattern off and that was a real problem it made a mess you leave a residue you'd have to work and sand on scrape off whatever this just makes it much easier so now i'm going to tape this with the blue tape and i'm going to go across this way there's no real reason that that's just the way i usually do it you could go lengthwise if you want to the main thing is you get the tape on there so i'm going to do that next
So I got the tape on there. You want to try to keep it smooth and wrinkle free, especially on this side. I try to keep it as flat on the back as I can, because I can give you a place that it would rock on the scroll saw. Uh, you want to keep that as flat as possible. Uh, just make sure it's all smoothed off really nicely. So now I'm going to glue this pattern on there. And there's a couple of different glues I use. I usually use this school glue. It comes out uh, purple color and it, it dries clear and clears as it dries and uh, it, it's very easily you can move the pattern if you want to before it sets up and it's not really a permanent glue uh, it's supposed to be temporary although it may become more permanent if you leave it on a while uh, and the other option is on a small piece like this that's what I like to use if you have a large piece then I'll use some spray glue and I don't really like using that because my shop is attached to the house and it really does smell. If I can do it outside on a good weather day, which I don't have today, uh, the spray glue works great, especially on a large, large pattern. If you have a large pattern, it's much easier to apply this. But in this case, I'm just going to use uh, the stick glue. And I just I like to go around. As far as I like this purple, it kind of tells where you you can see where you've applied it. It starts clearing really quickly. I like to get a good coverage. I like to get the edges so they don't <coughs> work up on me. And then just get it where you think it'll be good. And I usually just use the, the cap to kind of smooth it out. There may be some bumps from the glue, but you can kind of smooth those out. You want the air bubbles out of it as best you can. So anyway, there, that's applied now. Put the glue away. And uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cover this with a clear packing tape. So let me get that rounded up, and I'll do that. So... Only packing tape I got at the moment is on this dispenser. Need to get some more. I usually keep a, a small roll that I, I work off like I do the blue tape. But I'm going to use this. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go crossways with it. And I use the clear tape for multiple reasons. Uh, it may not really be necessary on this pattern and this project because it's going to be a pretty quick cut. But it, it helps protect the pattern. Helps hold it down. And uh, it's easy for corners to grab the corners when you're working on the saw and start peeling up and give you some trouble. Uh, just to me, and it, it takes you from smears, especially if you have a, a pattern that has a lot of fine detail. You can smear some stuff on it. It's harder to see, and this just helps protect it. It also, uh, what I really like about it, especially on a thicker material, it helps lubricate the blade as you're cutting. And that's the main reason I use it most of the time, especially on something thick. It does make a difference because uh, a thicker wood, is, your, your blade's working a little harder and it can heat up. But anyway, I, I generally put this on probably 80 or 90 percent of my projects because it just uh, makes it nice and nice to handle and keeps you from messing up the pattern. So I'm going to put this on. There, I have it covered with the, with the clear tape. One of the things I want to point out is make sure you get all the little bubbles. Try to keep any creases out of there because as you're cutting as possible, if the crease or a bubble is over your line, and as you're coming through, the sawdust can gather up underneath your tape and obscure your view. But uh, just kind of be careful putting it on. And like I say, it probably wasn't absolutely necessary for this project. But uh, I just wanted to demonstrate that. And on some of them, it really, really does make a difference. But I like protecting the pattern. So 
Next, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to drill entry holes in each one of these sections. Now, you don't have to cut these if you just want the, the little uh, loom, the little lucet. All you need really is this hole. And you have the option of that one if you want to drill it with a drill and make it a smoother hole, that's fine. But I'm going to cut all this with a scroll saw. Uh, a lot of times I will cheat though. If i got more than one to make, I'll just go ahead and drill that out. But we'll put some holes, entry holes in each one of these. I'm going to try to use a number five blade, so I've got to make a big enough hole for a number five, which is still pretty small. So, uh, what I like to do when I drill a hole, as I pointed out in another tutorial, is I like to put it close to a point like this, interior or exterior uh, hole. In this case, I'm going to put it close to these little tips right here. And that gives me a good point to go to on, to start my cut and to finish it. So let me get my drill over here. I use a scroller's drill for this, but I'll show you what else you can use. So I'm <clears throat> set up to drill the holes. I've got this. This is a scroller saw from Seiko. I actually paid more for that than I did for my scroll saw. Uh, but it handles a small, tiny little drill bit. You don't really need one this small to run a number five blade. You can do this with another, just a regular drill. I have... Uh, I have the battery powered one here, and you can use a corded drill if you if you if that's what you have. I mean that'll work too. Uh, the problem with those is, depending on the chuck they have on them, they may not get small enough for the small drill bits that you want. But in that case, you can use a Dremel. I don't like Dremel; it it uh, spins so fast it can burn up a small drill bit. You get a small drill bit like this. It doesn't take much speed to burn it up in a hard wood, but this will fit into your other drill. If you get a little small chuck like this, you can find those in Amazon and other places. Uh, so you can hold a smaller drill bit in those larger drills. You can also use a, a drill press if you have one, but it, uh, you have to do the same thing with it to get down to the smaller drill bits. Uh, I just like using this little thing. It's real quick and easy. And I'm going to drill these four holes real quick right here. see I drill those kind of close to those little points uh, so I'd have a good place to start. I don't like to get too close to the line because it kind of raises the edge especially on a larger drill bit it'll raise the edge of that pattern and obscure your line. I like to get far enough away from it that it doesn't do that and I had this piece of scrap under here this come off of my, uh, my drill press and I use that so I don't drill into my cutting mat or my tabletop but anyway, I got those holes drilled. That's my entry holes for my blades. I'm going to enter those from the bottom on my saw. And I'll show you a little tip to use if, uh, if for some reason you can't get in there. But I'll cover that when we get to the saw. I'll go get my saw set up. I'm going to put a number five blade in it. Uh, scroll reverse or reverse tooth or something like that. And we'll be ready to cut it. All right, I've moved to the saw. I'll put a new blade in. It's a number five. Uh, it's got every third tooth is a reverse tooth. I'm now checking to make sure that it is parallel, and it is. It's a 90 degree angle to the table. So now I'm going to take it loose and insert this through the hole in, in my piece, and we'll start cutting on it. Okay, so I'm going to start on this right here. You always do internal cuts first. I'm going to cut this one, and I probably won't film these other two because it's going to be identical to this one more or less, unless I can think of other techniques I want to show in those. But I'm going to start out right here. I'm going to come on that port and use that point, use that as an entry point. Uh, 
All right, so I always check the tightness of my blade. If I don't have it through a piece, it you can hear it make the sound. You can hear that sound. It kind of deadens it if I get against the, the side there. Plus, it's just by feel, and also by the sound of the, of the saw, it starts, it rattles a little bit if it's too loose. But that's this particular saw, and that's something you have to learn on your own saw. So like I said, I'm going to use this as an entry point. It gives me a good, good point to start with and to finish on. So here we go. This one's almost like a 90 degree, so I'm going to treat it as such. Now it's going to easily turn it into that next cut. So here, I've got waste, of course, this white area is waste. I'm just going to do a little loop out in the waste area. Since I'm not concerned about saving the center piece as waste, I'm going to come all the way across and cut this, this little knob off the end. You see how it pops out? You can make those pop out if you get the edge of the blade against it just right. It'll pop right out of that hole for you. This is cutting really smooth. I've got the saw at a pretty high speed. I like to keep it fairly high as long as I don't get the blade hot. That gives me more air through my little blower here because it works off the speed of the upper arm. This is again about a 90 degree turn. I'm going to go ahead and just make this turn right here. Now keep the pressure off the front of the blade as you're turning, but keep the blade moving up and down. go got that one internal cut done and we'll come up and, and do this one next one little thing I've learned to do is sometimes when you drill these this one's got a pretty clean hole but occasionally it will leave some you can see it's got a little bit of a splinter coming off there and that's pointing down and you're trying to put your blade in against that this one's not a problem but if it is I keep some blades over here on a magnet off to the side and I just go through like this and clean it out 
and that helps get that blade through from the bottom. A spiral blade works really well for that if you have one of those. Anyway, I'm going to put this through there. I'm going to cut that circle out. Like I say, you can drill that. But I'm just going to cut it on this one. And I'm going to treat that line just like a 90 degree. It's, it's a, little, a little sharper than that. But on a circle, I like going into the line as well as I can and try not to leave a little lip there when I come around from the other side. get right here I'll go really slow and let that blade just eat its way to that cut that I made in there this is actually fairly easier because it's a thicker piece this is a half inch piece so it's actually easier to cut because the blade don't want to wander as, as much but and this will make it easier to make it into that cut right there there we go now I'm going to cut these two out, and then it'll come back, and we'll do the outside. I'm going to film this one. I do a little bit different cutting in these smaller ones. There's a smaller area to cut, so I made a few different changes in the cutting. So we'll go into this, and I'll see if I can show them to you. I'm just going to come across and cut that bottom end off. It fell down through the hole in my saw block table. Now here I'm just going to go across here and cut that piece out. That gives me a good, good spot to start right here back on the line. Here I'm going to turn around and back in. It's a little more problematic on a thicker piece because you get more sawdust and it's easier to get it back behind the blade. It may take a couple of tries to get it in there. But I'm going to spin this with it going up and down into the waist and turn it around. Instead of turning or backing in, I'm just going to cut across to my entry hole. And that gives me a good spot to go in right here. So 
So that's one thing you can do is cut that waist area into little pieces. It helps you get into uh, tight corners. Of course, you can't do that if you're if it's a type of project which you're saving both sides. But we have waste on this one, so we're able to do that. And we're going to cut the outside of it. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Blade singing pretty nice note there. It sounds good. There's no rattle in the mechanism anywhere. So what I intend to do here, I'm going to come in right on that line. That's a pretty good spot because it's kind of got a little break there. It's not completely smooth. So it's easy to hide any uh, any discrepancy you have when you come around from the other side on your cut, which can happen sometimes. Uh, in fact, I'm going to start here and go around this way. And there we have it. Now we'll take it over to the bench and uh, get the pattern off of it. It cut it really nice and smooth. It's, I sped the saw up a little bit because it makes a little smoother cut when you're doing that. Less sanding. This doesn't shine real nice like a real really hard wood, but it's uh, it looks pretty good anyway. And of course, what we're going to do now is we're going to take the pattern off of it and kind of smooth it off and make sure it's sanded up good. So taking the pattern off this one is pretty straightforward. It's basically one piece, although it can easily break in areas like this uh, that you have to kind of peel it off, but you've got to get underneath it somewhere. And I try to get tape and all, because the tape comes off easier usually than the pattern does. The tape just slides right off that wood. Of course, the tapes and sections, it may leave some as it goes up like that. And like that. Always check the back side. There, got the pattern removed. I kind of like the way it's working. It's got some nice little grain pattern in it. But now I need to sand these these corners. You want to make it where it's comfortable to hold. You're going to be working uh, <clears throat> uh, cord around that so it needs to be smoothed off. So we'll get some sandpaper and start working on that. Well now I'm going to try to sand these uh, hard corners off of this. Uh, I'm going to just use my hand because I'm, I want this to be kind of organic and smooth. I don't want flat surfaces, you know, to sand with a flat surface. I want to kind of just take the, the edge off and round that off, especially here and up here where the uh, uh, string or the cord works around. I also want to do this, this area right in this circle because you have a cord that runs through there. Uh, try to keep the sharp, sharp edges off of that. I'm going to start off with some 60 grit. And I'm just going to sand it by hand and try to work all that down.
Well, that feels real good on my hand. Got the sharp corners off of it all the way around. Use those just a little bit. You don't need much. You just want to take that sharp edge off. Cord and string or whatever can flow through it a little easier. That was 60 grid. I'm going to get a, like 120 or 150 grid and kind of finish off, off my whole thing. I'm going to call that good. It doesn't need a whole lot of sanding. <clears throat> the surface of the wood was sanded to 150 grit when I got it. So I'll probably do a little cleaning of sawdust off of it and thinking about putting uh, some Danish oil on it. So I'm going to round up that and we'll see about doing that to it. So I'm using this Danish oil. This is a medium walnut. I usually use the natural but this is all I've got right now. And I'm just going to use a paper towel, and I'm going to put that on. I like to use this because it doesn't have a lot of bad fumes. I can use it in my shop without having any trouble breathing or have a bad smell. It just brings out the grain really nicely. Just put a very little on there to start with. That's just kind of a first coat. Of course, you can finish it with anything you want to do. You could stain it uh, darker or whatever you want to do. Uh, this is just something simple and easy I like to use. It's not very messy. And that's a real light coat for the first coat. We'll let that sit. I think it takes about 15 minutes, and I can put another coat on it. So we'll be back and look at that then. Yeah, I just want to show you there that on those internal pieces, I just take a small paintbrush and dip it and put it in there. It soaks into the wood real, real well and it makes it match all the way through. You can always look in there and see places you missed and go back and touch them up. I'll let that sit for a little bit and I'll come back and see about another coat. Okay, first coat has been on long enough to uh, come take a look at it. It's looking good. Uh, what you got to watch when you put a finish on something, sometimes it will raise the grain and you need to sand it back down. Uh, Danish oil doesn't do that very often, but if you put a polyurethane or a clear finish or 
sometimes a stain, it'll raise that grain up and if you want a smooth finish you need to sand it between the first and second coats. But all I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to put uh, another coat of Danish oil on it and we'll let that set and then we'll take a look at it. I'm not going to worry about those internal parts again. They pretty well have uh, soaked it up and they're darkened like the external. So I'm going to call that good, let that sit a little while, and then we'll take a look at it when that dries. So there it is. Uh, it's pretty well finished. Uh, the only other thing I might do is you could put a a clear coat on it would make it a little smoother as you have to work these cords up and over these uh, tines up here. Uh, that's, that's not necessary. This one is not clear coated and it works fine. Uh, I like the, the, the wood is smooth enough. I like the feel of it better in my hand than just than having that polyurethane or whatever you put on it. Varnish or anything like that. I just like the feel of the wood myself. That would be a personal uh, decision to make for how an individual would like it. But just to keep these things rounded makes a, makes the uh, string or cord whatever you're using work over a little better. And if you're interested in making this cord, the pattern that comes with this has a link to an instructional video. And it's very easy. You just have to get a routine going and I've made quite a few of these cords with this. And, uh, I've used them as bookmarks and various things. And you can tie things up with them, whatever. They're very strong. You can cut them and they don't ravel. Unravel. And if you like this, like this sort of thing, and I'm going to try to do more step-by-step -step tutorial videos, then hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed, and hit the like button on this one to help me out. And I appreciate it, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you.